So hi and welcome to the Apron Sew Along. The fabric I'm using today is a craft cotton, so it's a very heavy uh, cotton which is perfect for this type of garment. Of course denim works really well as, as well for an apron design. I'm going to be sewing this garment in two colours. I'm using a contrast strap and I'm also going to use a contrast for the pocket on the front. So because this is a woven garment, I've patterned the seam allowances at one centimetre, which is three eighths of an inch. I'm going to be using my overlocker just for the body of the garment, but the main part of the garment is going to be sewn on a plain stitch sewing machine. So we are probably going to need to use our iron quite a lot just to give us a lovely crisp finish to the edges. So when we're overlocking the edge of a woven fabric just to seal the edges, we don't need four threads. We only need three threads set in our overlocker. Now because I'm sewing the main part of the garment in white, I'm going to overlock the edge in white. Um, I'm still going to use four threads of overlocking because I like the finish, but certainly you only really need to do three threads. So when you're ready, take the main part of your garment and we're going to overlock around the outside edge and we're going to overlock from here all the way around back up to here on the other side there's no need to overlock across the upper edge and if you look in the upper edge you'll see notches anyway and we're going to use those for placement positions later on so when you're ready let's just get started and overlock around the outside of this garment The other thing about overlocking this garment is we're only going to overlock on the edge of our fabric. We're going to use the blade just to cut off any stray threads or any unravelling just to secure it. So now let's sew the straps. You'll have four straps that look the same. What we're going to do is sew them in pairs. So take two of them, place them right side together, and what we're going to do is starting at the flat end, sew down in a 3 8 of an inch, one centimetre seam, and all around the outside back to here. We're going to leave this edge open as our turning edge. Don't forget to back tack at the beginning and end of your work. There is a notch to match part way down. When you get to this corner here, stop lift, turn and pivot and continue stitching. When you get to approximately a centimetre, three eighths of an inch from the edge, lift, turn and pivot. And stop again when you're one centimetre from the edge here, three eighths of an inch. Stop with the needle down in your work, lift, turn and pivot. Now what we're going to do is turn this through, sew the second strap and give them a really good press.
So now we need to go to our iron and do some pressing. You need to press the straps nice and flat, making sure the outside of them is pushed right to the outside. So make sure you press both of those straps nice and flat. With the tab, you need to fold it in half and press it, and then fold each of the raw edge in half again and press that, because we're going to sew it together like that. With the front facing piece, you'll have one edge that has notches on it and one edge that doesn't. On the edge that doesn't, you need to turn that up by one centimetre, three-eighths of an inch, and press it down. And now we'll move on to the pocket. The pocket has seams around the outside so on the three sides you need to press that up by one centimeter three-eighths of an inch so the top of the pocket has an extra notch in it and the bottom of the pocket doesn't so that's how you'll know the top from the bottom so the three sides around the outside are one centimeter three-eighths of an inch seam allowance and to press the top come to the notch which is at three centimeters which is one and three sixteenths of an inch, turn that over and press it from side to side. Once you've pressed that down, come to the top edge and turn that over by one centimetre, which is three eighths of an inch. So what we've got is a double turn. So that will just help us stitch this into place and have it look really nice. With the body of the garment, each of these curved seams needs to be turned up one centimetre, three-eighths of an inch. The top we're going to leave for now. On the side, you'll see a nick here at the end of the curve. So that notch there will show us the turn position for the pressing on this side. So there's a two centimetre hem allowance on this side which is three quarters of an inch so that runs all the way down to the bottom the bottom as well has a two centimeter three quarters of an inch seam allowance and then of course the same for the other side back up to the curve which has a one centimeter seam allowance so let's do some top stitching on the straps I'm going to stitch around the three edges. Now the width is entirely up to you. I'm going to make mine around about five mil, which is near enough to quarter of an inch. And if you wanted to, if you were working in contrast fabric, I could, because this is black, I could top stitch this in white. It's entirely up to you what you want to do, but I, for now, I'm just going to top stitch this in black. And remember, whatever you do for one strap, you need to do for the other strap. If you start to get a bit of tunnelling, just lift your foot and just release the tension slightly. Now I'm going to lift, turn and pivot at that 6mm, quarter of an inch as well. And I'm going to stop quarter of an inch before the point, lift, turn and pivot. So what I've done is sew an edge stitch right on the edge of the top of the pocket piece to create the um, area that the hand can go in. I've sewn this from the back but you could just as easily sew it from the front if you prefer. Now what you need to do is fold this piece in half and find the centre point. 
Now that's because we're going to sew a line of stitching through the center. So all I'm doing is matching the edges and I'm just going to chalk a line down. Now of course you could um, put a pin in that if you prefer. Okay, so now we have the pocket ready to be sewn onto the front of the garment. If we take our garment, place it right side up under your machine. And you'll see small circles that have been drawn on your pattern which are called drill holes. So the drill holes are to help position our pocket in the correct place. On this pattern the drill holes have been made to be one centimeter three-eighths of an inch. That means when our pocket is finished so the edge is folded over you have to imagine a point one centimeter in and one centimeter down from that top edge and that point there needs to match exactly on top of the drill hole. Now that's because in the garment industry drill holes are physical holes in your fabric so this is designed to cover them. So what we're going to do is start placing our pocket in the correct position. So making sure the apron is right side up with the top at the top and the bottom at the bottom and you have this edge we've just sewn at the top here is our drill hole mark. Imagine that position, one centimeter, three eighths of an inch in and down from the folded edge, and then place that directly on top of the drill hole and hold it into position. Now we're going to do exactly the same on this lower edge. Fold up the space that you ironed and find that position one centimeter in and one centimeter down like so and that will fit directly on top of that drill hole. Now if you've done something a little bit strange in your cutting and you find this needs to be stretched don't. It's more important that the pocket sits flat than this is exactly on top of each other. The main thing we want to do is make sure we hide those holes. So we'll come to the other side and do exactly the same thing. Tuck under that fold position, place that directly on top of your drill hole in the correct position like so. And the last one as well. And now you need to just do a little bit of readjusting. If there's any bobbly bits, or any bits that aren't sitting smooth, make sure that you adjust it so they are. And sometimes it's a good idea to put extra pins in around the edge before you go to sew. So in this situation here, I would come back and just readjust that pin mark, that pin position there. Right, so now I could sew this in a contrast colour if I wanted to. Because I did the straps in black, I'm just going to go ahead and sew this in black. So I'm going to start up at this corner here, remembering to back tack, and sew all around the outside in an edge stitch. And when we sew, apart from the fact we should never sew over our pins, um, make sure that you back tack the beginning and end to secure the work. And also make sure if you have any raw edges and any stray bits of thread, tuck them under. When you get to this corner position, stop with a needle down in your work, lift, turn and pivot with that presser foot and then just rearrange the work before you continue. Now every now and then I am just stopping to release a bit of the tension just to keep everything nice and straight.
Okay, so now I'm going to sew the center seam in my pocket just so I have two hand positions. So I'm going to make sure my needle starts exactly on the stitching line down the bottom and I'm just going to follow my chalk line up remembering to back tack. So that will act as a nice secure edge for my pocket. Okay, so now we need to sew the hanger tab together. So we've gone ahead and pressed it. All we're going to do, so we've folded in half and then a half again with the raw edges in the centre. Just match your raw edges and sew an edge stitch from side to side just to secure that opening. And there's no need to back tack the beginning and end of that. So find the notch close to the centre on this folded edge and place the tag like this. What I'm going to do is place the tag in the very centre of the notch so that this is perpendicular which means at right angles and I'm just going to secure, actually I'm just going to bring it up from the edge to hide it a little bit and I'm just going to sew a couple of back tack stitches to secure it. Then I'm going to come across and come down again to the other notch position. And stitch that into place. Now it's not essential to do um, that but I'm just finding if you can see. So this is just curved around and that will just be a nice little hanger hook. So that'll just help you when we sew the garment together. Take the body of the garment and place it right side up. And take this piece, the facing piece that you just sewed, and place it right side down like so. So what we want is this um, tag at the bottom. And then just match the notches at the front. And I'm just going to pop a pin in place to hold that into position. So if you've cut this properly this raw edge should be sitting exactly on the overlocked edge here. Now you need to take one of your straps and we're going to place it within those two layers. So the position for the strap is you want the edge of it to sit on the edge of the fold like so. And then we want this piece to sit over the top. So when you have that in the right position, hold that in with a pin. And as you can tell at the top here, I've marked the, marked the edge of the strap with a notch. So that's another way you can um, figure out the correct place. And do the same with the other side. Take the top of the strap, notch position here, Make sure you are one centimetre, three-eighths of an inch in from the edge. And then just hold that in place with a pin. Okay, so now we're going to sew this into position. We're going to create a little bag out. We're going to be sewing up here and across and down to the other side. So this is a one centimetre, a three-eighths of an inch seam. Now you have to make sure when you sew up that you don't catch the edge of the strap. So we do need to create a back tack. If you need to, you can hold this out of the way while you sew the edge. But just make sure it's nice and straight when you get to the top. So sew a couple of stitches at that one centimetre, three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Sew up and stop one centimetre, three eighths of an inch before the edge. Stop with your needle down in your work, lift, turn and pivot. Rearrange the work so the strap is straight and stitch across the top matching all your notches. Thank you. 
stop again one centimeter three eighths of an inch from the edge lift turn and pivot open this up and if you need to just pull this strap out of the way and stitch down until you finish right on that fold and back tack right so what we're going to do now is turn this this through and check our work So we're now going to um, top stitch around the outside of our garment because I don't like my beginning and ending being somewhere conspicuous I'm going to start at the side seam position so I'm going to turn this curve up one centimeter which is three eighths of an inch and in two centimeters which is three quarters of an inch I'm going to make sure all my overlocking is nice and tidy and I'm just going to start here back tack and I'm going to sew my one centimeter seam allowance and I'm going to stitch through my overlocking line just to hide all um, the extra stitches Now when I get to here I'm actually going to go all the way to the top that's just to create an extra bit of strengthening and I'm going to back tack off there. Now I'm going to making sure all my bits of stray threads are all tucked under I'm going to edge stitch from the side to the other side. Now when I do this, I've got to make sure that this seam is really pushed out. You could go ahead and iron it first if you liked. And we need to be very careful when we come to our tab position. So I'm making sure that tab is pushed down. When I reach here I'm going to tuck this over like so I'm only going to go as far as the overlocking line there I'm going to lift turn and pivot and sew down to the hem hem I'm going to tuck up these now of course if you wanted to you could always mitre these corners
and back tack to finish. So when you're ready, place your button in your buttonhole attachment and sew the buttonholes onto your garment. So the buttonhole position is marked on the pattern. The best way of doing the buttonholes is to mark the start and then draw the centre line and the back will finish depending on the button you have chosen. So just choose a nice chunky button and suggested sizes are on that information sheet. But as long as the start positions are evenly um, marked, you should be fine. I'm going to start on the middle one. So just go ahead and tidy those up, um, then snip them open and uh, repeat on the other side. So the last step in our process is to stitch our button in in the correct position, which is marked on the pattern here. So when you've done that, your garment is finished and thanks for joining me with the sew along video. And don't forget to join up with my Facebook pattern discussion group, which is Trish Newbury Design Pattern Discussion Group. And you'll be able to see pictures of garments that other people have made and catch up with the latest releases.